So, uh, why don't you, instead of me, why don't you explain to people what you do? So, I'm uh, the CEO and co-founder of a company called Colossal Biosciences. We're the world's first de-extinction and species preservation company. Yeah, and uh, that is a wild thing. I mean, this is uh, essentially, I mean, literally wild. This is essentially real-life Jurassic Park. Yeah, we get the this Jurassic is... Park occasionally, like, believe it or not, we get that. <coughs> So how does one do this? It's like, let's, before we get to what you showed me earlier, which is fucking amazing. <laughs> before that, how does one do this? Like, <clears throat> from what I understand, you have to take the gene of an Indian elephant, which is the closest thing to a mammoth. Yeah, let me walk through the whole process. Yeah. So first you have to find ancient DNA, which is pretty shitty on a good day. So the minute we take DNA out of our bodies or out of anything, it starts to degrade at an insanely rapid rate. So we definitely need uh, to find a lot of samples. So we actually have about 109 mammoth samples, ranging from 3,000 years old to 1.2 million years old, which is awesome. Wow. But it's also fragmented. It's like it's like a shitty jigsaw puzzle that you don't know what the box is, and someone's stolen part of the puzzle. And then, oh, by the way, people have taken other puzzle pieces and put them in there. So there's all kinds mm. of problems with that. So this is really an AI and compute problem. It's not as much a human problem. So you have to get a lot of samples first. And then you have to start mapping them to their closest living relative. And genotyping allows us to understand that that's Asian elephants, right? So Asian elephants are 99.6% the same as mammoths. Mm. They're actually closer related to mammoths than they are to African elephants. Really? Yeah, which always blows people's mind. That and the fact that mammoths were alive when we were building the pyramids or aliens or whoever was building the pyramids. Like, <laughs> like literally, like humans were building the pyramids while mammoths existed. And sometimes that blows people's mind because they always think of them as in this like weird, like uh, prehistoric, like 65 million years old dinosaur. When, when, when did they go extinct? Uh, so the last one went extinct about 4,000 years ago. Really? Uh, on Wrangell Island. Yeah. Wow. So they've been a while. They were around for a long time. 4,000 years ago. I know. Ago. They weren't. I mean, now they appeared about two and a half million years ago, as far as we understand. In the, they were mostly a Pleistocene species. But as we moved into the Holocene and kind of the period that we're in right now, they existed. They existed all the way up until they had this like small genetic bottleneck on Wrangell Island. Wow. And where's Wrangell Island? Uh, it's northeast of Siberia. Whoa. And they just, was it a small island? They just ran out of resources there? Like what happened? Well, there's a couple different theories, right? One of the theories uh, with Wrangell Island is that they actually, uh, uh, there's lots of inbreeding. So there's lots of like genetic bottleneck, which happened because there's not a different species there. How large is Wrangell Island? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Can you give me a photo again, Jamie? I'll pull up a map. Okay. And so essentially, though, um, Wrangell Island and then um, uh, there's another island called St. Paul Island, which is also between Alaska and, and the United and uh, Russia, also is where they were. Those are kind of the last two places that, that we know mammoths existed today. And they died out 4,000 years ago. Yeah, so and now, now some actually, small. there is actually a, uh, another working hypothesis that oh, yeah, they actually ran out of water. They ran out of access to fresh water on the island. Oh, wow. So some combination of genetic bottleneck and that occurred. Wow, 4,000 years is so recent. I know, it's, it's crazy recent. So this is the question. If you have, say, let's go to woolly mammoth. Mm -hmm. So if you have woolly mammoth and you have 99%, how do you bridge that gap? How, so do, you, how do you create that's synthetic biology so you never have to get to 100 percent, right you need to get to probably synthetic biology synthetic biology that's where you are using all of these different genetic tools probably heard of crispr all these other mm -hmm. things genetics you know which is it, it knock out it breaks the dna it's not the always the best tool we can now actually make individual edits uh to when you think of the dna double you know, helix, right? In those rungs of the ladder, mm -hmm. those individuals are called nucleotides. We can change the letters. Like that's how precise we can be. We can say at spot, you know, 4 million eight, I need to change that letter. And so you change that letter. And then other times you actually synthesize big blocks of DNA. So when you notice that in the mammoth and in the, in, in the uh, Asian elephant, there's a difference. And if it's in these certain like co protein coding regions in all these different regions of the genome that drive phenotypes or physical like attributes, like you know, 
curved tusk, dome cranium, small ears, the subcutaneous fat layer, um, and uh, and then hair and, and coat color. You can actually then engineer that into the Asian elephant, right? Because you're only looking, you, you're only really looking at that 0.4 percent difference, right? It's still a lot of numbers, but you're only looking at that. And so the better you can be at software, and the better you can be using AI and the and computer models, the less edits you have to make, right? Because you're really just trying to target those core phenotype. And so there's specific characteristics that these animals have, one of them being the big furry coats that you guys, what did you do with mice? We, we made woolly mice. <laughs> See if you can find that. The, the, and the, only, the only like unintended consequences was they were cute as fuck. <laughs> like they, people have lost their minds, right? Like we're, there's, there's, I was, I was on the phone recently with a, you know, moderately aggressive, um, journalist and uh and it was going quite poorly as some calls go. moderately aggressive <laughs> Mod- they were being aggressive in what <laughs> they, way like some why people, are you doing this some people yeah they, they everyone likes look how cute it. Yeah. So my daughter actually found this online and wants one yeah so we get that a lot from, she wants from a kids mouse. <laughs> so every week every week um i don't have my laptop i should look how in here. cute but every week oh my god they're adorable so this so these woolly mice aren't just adorable we basically said, look, what are the core genes that drive the hair phenotype or physical attribute of a of a mammoth um, from an Asian elephant to a mammoth? And then because we tr- want to do this in the most ethical way as possible, there's about 200 million years of genetic divergence between mice and elephants. We didn't just want to ram mammoth DNA in there and see what happens. So we look for the mouse equivalent, right? So we look for, like, all of us have similar genes. And so we can try to look for those genes and then edit those genes with the data we got from the mammoth so that we're then not just putting random genes in there that could either hurt the animal or kill them, right? Or that may not even be compatible with life, right? So we try to be really, really thoughtful about it. And the, the, the woolly mice um, went like, it, it went insane. There's people that are like making t-shirts, there's a meme coin. Uh, and so we, we, we made 36 mice. They're all, they're all healthy. There's 36 mice that we wow. made. Um, and what was crazy about it is we're excited about it because it shows that the end to end process of taking data from an ancient gene, uh, DNA, c- comparing it to a living animal, making those changes, doing it with a hundred percent efficiency. And that's really important and really hard. So we did it with a hundred percent efficiency. Yeah. That, that's wow, the, the that's, difference. Well, so the, the one mouse, of them, if it was in a trap, you'd be so sad. Yeah. Like exactly. the little guy on the left, if he was in a trap, I'd be like, oh, what could we killed? Isn't that funny? Just a little bit of fur. Yeah. It makes you love them. And that's the color that we think most mammoths were. So, really? They were yeah, like a blonde. They were like they were like a golden brown color, wow. right? Because when we pull them out of the permafrost, they've been sitting in mud for quite some time. Oh. But if you see very fresh mammoths, like from uh, Siberia and whatnot, like in Yakuts and other places in northern Siberia that they actually have uh, pretty pretty well-preserved mammoths, they actually have kind of a... Uh, dirty blonde meets uh, gold meets brown fur. Wow. 